Morning, sweetheart. It is lovely to be here. And I'm inside because it's just too breezy out there. And actually, I'm quite pleased because we haven't been able to play with rocks for ages. So let's do rocks. Um, let's just have a lovely little piece of rose quartz. Um, very ordinary, right? But I love this because somewhere in this stone, um, it's a little bit, it's a little bit layered. And I don't know if I can, yeah, see, you can see there's lines in it. It's, I mean, you know, rose quartz doesn't really grow as agate, and I don't really think this one's agatized, but I'm fond of it all the same. Hello, Mike, it's great to see you. I just love that it's got this fracture plane through it. Um, and, you know, it's translucent, of course, because it's rose quartz. And it's beautiful. Um, and there's, you know, the surfaces are kind of soft and shiny at the same time. And, um, yeah, it just volunteered to say hello to us today. So, good morning. Um, from something small to something smaller, this is a little uh, dodecahedron. Yeah, dodecahedron. Ten pentagons. And it's just, again, it's something small and wonderful that decided to show itself off and say hello to us. Morning, Jen. Good morning, beautiful beings. It's lovely to see you jumping on. Um, and I just like this. It is made of amethyst, you know. It's not gemmy amethyst. It's not fancy amethyst. It's kind of agatized, crazy amethyst. But it's a sweet little thing. And there it is. Um, and last but not least, I've got to get this right. This is smoky amethyst cactus quartz from um, somewhere in deepest, darkest South Africa. Although it's not dark, it's just deepest South Africa. Because that's where my friend Jenny Paolo gets her goodies from. And this one's wonderful. Because you can see the smokiness, right? It's really dark. That means it's seen some radiation. Because it's radiation inside the earth that makes quartz smoky. And the darker it is, the more smoky you get. Um, but obviously it's also amethyst because you can see the purple. Um, and then there's all this redness on it, which is hematite. Um... At least it's my understanding. I'm pretty sure there's some form of iron. And there is just nothing that's not interesting and wonderful about this. So, um, yeah, I love to share this with you. And look, it's got hematite phantoms, I think, inside. You can see. That's not red on the outside. It's red on the inside. So it's lovely that you, that you can see through it. And you can see how it's grown over time. Good morning, Laura. Good morning, Eric. It is very cool. Um, and look how shiny these facets are, you know. It's a beautiful piece and I really enjoy sharing it with you. On loan to me from my friend Jenny, who has so many beautiful rocks. She finds them, a lot of them in Africa, but by no means all, and uh, makes them available to very fortunate people in New Zealand for really good prices. Loud necklace. Mm, yeah, it's a bit heavy, honey, and I don't like heavy things around my neck. <laughs> But if you want a great boat anchor, sure, <laughs> there it is. So, today um, I'm going to talk about the problem of pain. And that's because um, one of you asked me about pain, and particularly in the context of doing the meditation work that um, I love to do. Willow, good morning, beautiful. Um, in the context of, hey, I want to be taking time to create my life every day but stand, be with me if you're not into meditation. Morning, Heather! I don't know, Mike. I don't, I don't know. Because I don't know what Cinnabar looks like. See, I'm not that educated about rocks. <laughs> um, but we can all guess. So, particularly in the context of doing meditation, um, the meditation work of Dr. Joe Dispenza, which has totally transformed me, and I keep seeing it change people's lives, which is really cool. Because it's based on science, you see. It's not a lot of woo-woo and fantasy. It's actually, these are the rules, these are the laws, this is quantum physics, this is neuroscience, this is psychoneuroimmunology, I've learned those words, this is epigenetics, and this is how it all works together to change your life, right? So, when you fall in love with this work, which, if you do, you do, um, you want to do it every day. Because you don't, want to, you don't want the magic to stop and you start feeling different in yourself and then other things start to change. It's really cool. But what happens if you have pain that's so severe that you can't sit, stand or lie in any ease and it's really hard to concentrate, okay? So that was the question that was asked. And I thought, well, geez, this is a bit of a challenge 
Firstly, because I have never had to personally overcome that problem myself. I have I had to overcome a ton of pain in my head about fear, mostly. Um, that's been my thing that I've had to overcome. But I've never had a great deal of physical pain. I sort of took a moment to feel grateful for the fact that 54 and a half years in this body, I don't have a lot of pain. Now, I've done a lot to be in this situation. It hasn't happened by accident. I've been working at this for more than 20 years. Um, and then, then, you know, it's a reward. But whatever. This is not something that I personally know about. So then I thought, well, who do I know that could tell me something useful about this? In fact, I didn't ask that question. When I saw the question, um, I thought, I'm going to ask my husband about this. Because my husband has had a lot of experience dealing with pain. 2000 it was. He had a serious about the worst, in an automobile accident, which was not his fault, uh, he got about the worst uh, whiplash that you could get without breaking anything, and he was in a lot of pain for a long time, and his pain tolerance was really, really high. So when I say he was in a lot of pain for a long time, he was in a lot of pain. Um, and if my husband says it's nine and a half out of ten, it's bad, right? So, I'll just get that out of the way. Now, it took a long time. We didn't have the tools that we do have today. Because if we had, it would have been a hell of a lot easier. But in those days, Joe hadn't even put, started putting together the model that he's teaching now. So, you know, that's just how it was. Um, and it was very slow, and we did it matter to matter. And actually, now I understand how much it was about the mind. Um, but what happened is, you know, I started doing this work every day in April 2019, so I'm coming up on my two-year anniversary, Whee! Um, and my husband, I think, knew that there was value in this, but he just couldn't quite get his head around it, you know, life, whatever, I've got other things, and how do I make time for it, um, and there was a day when his body threw a purple freaking fit, and I could tell by the, you know, because his skin tone changes, he goes kind of grey and uh, when it's bad, and I said, look, why don't you just do this? Was it 47, 42 minute meditation, the very first blessing of the energy centers, which is very powerful for healing. I said, just, you know, try it because people have had great results of this and pain drops. And he was in so much pain that he just went, oh, fine, okay, I'll do it. I mean, this is what I was thinking in my, in, in my head. This is what I reckon happened. His body backed him into a corner and said, you're going to do this, basically. Funny way to have it happen, but, you know, when there's a lot of resistance, sometimes it takes a lot to get through to us. So he sat down, he did the meditation, and 42 minutes later, his pain had gone down from a 9.5 to somewhere, as he said, between 4 and 6, which was pretty massive, because between 4 and 6 is kind of, you know, I, I mean, I'd be probably wanting to die, but because uh, I have zero pain tolerance. But for him, that was like a massive improvement, and it got his attention, and he's pretty much meditated every day since then. Because he got the hint. Um, and over time, we've seen so much that's changed. Let me just stop there because it's not actually about his story. But to let you know that this man knows what pain is like. He knows what managing pain is like before being able to make his brain coherent, which is where it, where it starts, you know, brain coherence. Because all pain is an incoherent signal to the body, period. And the fact that it tends to feed back on itself and loop and get more and more and more and get hardwired, and then you get neurochemically conditioned to it, just like a bad emotion, is like, oh yeah, it, it just becomes this thing that gets more and more and more. And the more chemistry of stress that you get in your body, the more pain you get. Because the chemicals actually get stuck in your tissues and adrenaline, as Joe says, is a liquid energy for your for your body to run away from a predator. But if you're not running away from a predator, it sits in your tissues and it burns. And you get chronic pain. And that was what we dealt with, right? For a long time. And he still has pain, but it's just not wall to wall horrible like it used to be so he knows what it's like before coherence and he knows what it's like after coherence and he knows what it's like to wake up still with pain and we get up early to meditate and he does it every day and I said okay so how do you deal with this how do you deal with the fact that your body is screaming at you there's no way to be comfortable um and you know what's the deal how do you overcome this and he thought for a bit and he said, well, I just make a decision that this is the time that I've set aside for meditation 
And I know, you know, this is the time that I set aside for meditation. Carrie, it's you. Get me, honey. Um, and whatever happens, I'm here for the duration. Um, and sometimes that's all that happens. Sometimes I just stare and I think, I'm here for the duration, and it's really hard, and I can't get my head around it, I can't get my heart around it, but quite often, and more often now, you know, it's sort of, you know, you work through this, you just know, because he had that initial experience of going from 9.5 to 4 to 6 in 42 minutes, he knows it works, right, it's real, that was serious pain, cut in half in 42 minutes by creating brain coherence and creating coherence in each of the little brains that we have in our body. We've got seven of them. This is one of the, the big ones, but, you know, there are seven little brains in your body. And when you make them more coherent, your body starts to heal. So he had that as a, hey, this shit works. But there, there have been plenty of days when this has been pushing shit uphill and his body's been in pain. So the first thing he said is, you've got to make a decision. I make a decision. I am here to, to meditate. This is the time I have set aside. Body, you may kick and scream. You might hurt. You might refuse. Um, but he, he said, I just, you know, I keep on doing the thing. But then, you know, for 15 seconds it stops. And I think, oh, my God, this really works. Wow. And then it's back again. You know, hi, Sigma Ray. Um. And sometimes there's no no triggers at all, Laura. It's just physical. You know, it's just the body running a hardwired program. And we understand this so much um, because, you know, I understand how it is that he created the personality that had this painful body. It's difficult. You know, too long, too long story to tell, and not the point. But he has to overcome the physical, visceral experience of all that pain in his body. He has to make a choice. To do the meditation anyway. And he said to me, well, you know, it goes away 15 seconds. I'm like, oh my God, this is great. This works. And then, you know, it comes back. Because he's it's it's a skill for him to hold the state of being where his body's not playing that tune. And he said, you know, it happens more often now. It's more consistent now. It's better now. And consequently, with his eyes open, Jenny, good morning. With his eyes open, he is in general, trending to being more comfortable. That's not to say he doesn't have days when it's all ow. Because he's working with his body on the yoga mat as well. He's breaking down tissue restrictions. Um, and what that means is that the body has to adapt. And there are things that he's letting go of physically, emotionally, energetically, chemically, in every way, neurologically. And the body has to accommodate that new state of being. And sometimes that hurts. But he understands that he's got to move his way through it. Now, more recently, and th this is something I hope I can explain this well. Back in the days when we didn't have these tools at all, really all Lawrence knew how to do was to force through it, to push harder, to ignore. I, I, I'll probably write back to you, Carrie, or I'll lose my thought. But maybe I'll, maybe I'll have time to come back to this in this question. It's a big question. And, you know, I'm not an expert because I haven't done it myself. I'm, this is this is what I learned from my husband who had, totally has done it and is doing it. But he just he is just there for the duration. Even if it's a quote-unquote crappy meditation, even if he feels nothing, but he just stays there and says, body, we're doing this. If I'm just listening to the music and staying present as best as I can, that's enough. That's what I'm going to do. And there's a lady that I'm thinking of who had this um, pelvic floor prolapse and her body was like that. It's like, you know, because her body wanted to get up and do things and whatever. She said, look, I don't care if we just sit here and listen to the music body. This is what we're doing. And it's about not letting your body make your choices for you. It's not letting your body determine who you're going to be or how your future is or what you're going to dream of or what you're going to create it's about actually being the mind that says hey body I know I've got to work with you and this is where I was getting back to what I'm seeing is that my husband is much better at working with his body you know when he was when he's meditating that's it I am here I'm here and I'm meditating and that's it don't care what you throw at me, I'm going to deal with it. I'm going to be as coherent as I can. But when he gets up and opens his eyes and moves through his day, then he has to 
do this dance between not letting his body define who he is and how it's been, you know, oh, that hurts, that means I can't do that, and you know, not letting his body make his mind up for him, and at the same time, so that's the iron will to be dedicated to your future, and at the same time, I'm seeing him have much more communication and respect with his body about how he does do things, so he doesn't flog himself into stuff, because that was all he knew how to do before we had what we're doing now, and then be even worse off later. I mean, that's the thing with musculoskeletal stuff, you know, you can push on through and then, you know, the shit happens afterwards. And um, he's not, he's not, um, he's not giving into it, but it's this, it's this dance. And you know, there, there, there are miracles and there are losses and there are things going on and all of those things, we have the choice about how we respond to them. And I haven't read properly. Um, dear Sang Marie, and I know you've just had a big change and your life is full of miracles it's like you know we just have to run with the flow and so do I um, even people passing over has its appropriateness it's just a shock for us sometimes I'll reply to you properly in words later because you know it's a shock and people have to adapt and so do we have to adapt so you know emotional pain physical pain financial pain occupational pain, workplace pain, relationship pain, whatever it is, we can allow those things to distract us, to bully us into saying, oh, well, because of this, I can't focus today. I can't meditate today. Or whatever it is. Robin, good morning, honey. Um, Carmen, Lena, I don't think I said hello. Good morning. It's lovely to see you all jumping on. So, um, you know, pain... The only thing I know, because I have listened to all of these so many people who have overcome severe and, and chronic pain, and they have sat in their meditations, they have sat sometimes just gritting their teeth and saying, I'm not getting up, I'm not getting up until I feel some small change in me. I'm not giving in, I'm not going to let this condition in my body define me anymore. And it becomes a war inside you. You know, I said to Lawrence, so sometimes, you know, it's like a screaming match inside you. You say, absolutely. It is totally a screaming match because your body is throwing everything it has at you because it wants things to stay the same. It wants to run the show. And, and often I have noticed this in myself, not to the same extremities, but I've noticed that when I am really starting to change emotionally, then, you know, I have a day or two when my head is just exploding. It's like it gets worse because it's getting better. And the part of you, the, the personality, the old you that has created that old self that is starting to fall apart. You know, you're pruning apart those synapses and you're changing the biochemistry. But the old one is still there and the new one isn't quite formed yet. And you're in between the two of them and it's like, ah, London! That extremity where the body absolutely screams and says, oh, just chuck in a program, do what you're used to doing, give in, give up, get angry, whatever it is, get sad, get hopeless, say, oh, people always do this, um, you know, whatever. That is your body telling you how it's always been and how it's always going to be and you don't need to let that stop you. But understand that it takes an iron will. And at the same time, when you open your eyes and you get up and you go into your day, there is this balance between that iron will and loving and respecting yourself and giving your body the support it needs, because it will need support, you know. Um, but not letting that be what defines you. And I think that's the best that I can explain about this because although I have not experienced severe pain, oh my God, I, and I'm so grateful, but I've never actually faced that, never. Um, I, I know because I've listened to people who've done it, who've, and, and they had to break the, the neural connections and they had to recondition themselves to new chemistry. And for some people, they go to an advanced workshop and there is a ton of energy that's available and there's a lot of coherence, and there's a lot of support and they have this massive experience and their pain is gone. 
And some people, like my husband, sit down with a 9.5 out of 10 pain and they spend 42 minutes and it's down to half in 42 minutes, you know. That can happen. It can happen very quickly. I sat down, did my first meditation and, and healed a genetic um, polymorphism that was causing lots of problems. It's gone. So I can happen really fast. But also, I recognize in myself that, you know, the programs of fear, which have driven so much in me, and have become who I was, they did become who I was, it's taken me a long time to unravel those because it's been who I've been for a long time. And you don't tend to stop being someone that you've been for decades in a week or even a month or maybe even in a year. So, you know, how long have I been programming myself to be like this? How long have I been endorsing this state of being? How long have I been programming my body to be like this? And where is all the pain that's stuck in my body from all of the unprocessed trauma and emotional stuff and whatever else um, <clears throat> that I'm experiencing, but I have to overcome that with love and coherence and all that stuff, you know? So for what it's worth, that's my thoughts about pain. Thanks, and gratitude to my beloved who has had the experience and is still overcoming the experience. But the more coherence he practices in his heart and his brain, and he does it every day, one way or another, eyes open as well as eyes closed, the more consistently, the more easily, and it's still a battle, trust me, it's still a battle for him, but I see it happening easier and easier and he doesn't fight himself so much. He flows more easily through his days and it is totally peeling the layers off the onion one, a year, one at a time and it is so worth it, isn't it? And you look back and you think, oh my God, who I was two years ago. Thank heavens that's not me. I'm so grateful that that person got me here. I wouldn't go back and I wonder who I'll be next year. And that's how I feel about it. So thank you so much for asking that fantastic question. It's a, it's a big one. Um, and I would love to know what other, you know, what everybody thinks. If this is bullshit, if you got things, but I tried this and this didn't work. I'd love to know because let's open this up and talk about it some more. For now, I'm done. Big love. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.